Hello. In this video, we're going to talk about the measures of central tendency. These are the very fundamentals of statistics. Why do we need a measure of central tendency? A central tendency provides us that one number which represents a set of numerical values. Because it is easy to refer and to remember just one value compared to multiple values that a data might contain. The measures of central tendency that we are going to cover today are the mean, the median, and the mode. Let's talk about the mean or the average, which is the most popular measure of central tendency. Mean or average of a given set of numerical values is represented as the sum of all the values divided by the total number of values. So let's say if we know test scores of 15 students of a class, as listed below, and if we want to know how a particular student is doing compared to his peers, it will be easier if you could be told that one number which is representative of the whole class's performance. So going by the definition, mean is equal to sum of all test scores divided by total number of students. In this case, we add up all the test scores and divide it by the total number of students, which is 15. Now this comes out to 81 upon doing all the computation. What's important to understand with respect to mean is the fact that a mean is influenced by the magnitude of values. By magnitude, we mean to say how large or how small the values are affects the value of a mean. Now let's talk about the median. Median of a given set of numerical values is defined as the central value which divides the data into two parts that is lower and upper in such a way that there are 50% data points above it and 50% data points below it. So it is nothing but the 50th percentile of your data. In order to calculate median, we must first sort the data in ascending order. Let's take the same example of test scores of 15 students that we referred to. These are the scores. Now we sort the data. So this is now in an ascending order. Now that we see, you have seven data points to the left and seven data points to the right of the number 83. Therefore, this is the number that divides your data into two halves. And that's where it is the median. Now let's talk in general. If we have n data points, and if n is odd, then we know how to calculate the mean. We've already done that. Here we could easily see the entire data and that's where it was easy for us to figure out the median. Now suppose if you have too many data points and you want to calculate the median, the easy way to find it out is by applying this rule which says it is the n plus one by twoth value. Similarly, if n is even, then the median is the average of n by 2 -th and n by 2 plus 1 -th value. So let's say if we had 14 test scores instead of 15, which is an even number, the median would have been calculated as an average of 14 by 2, that is 7th, and 14 by 2 plus 1, that is 8th. So it would have been the average of 7th and 8th value. And here are the two values. So the median now that you have 14 data points, which is an even number, is 81.5. The important thing to remember about a median is that it is not influenced by the magnitude of values. It is a measure of position where your data is placed. How your data is placed is something that is more important when you're talking about median. It does not get affected by the values. The last one in the series is mode. And mode is the most frequently repeated value in a given data set. So suppose if the test scores in our example were like this, then by looking at this data, we see that there is a particular number which has been repeated three times, and that number is 80. Therefore, our mode is 80. An important point to note here is that a given data can have multiple modes. So just as we see in this example, we have a data point which is 80. It's repeated twice. It is a mode, but there is a tie. 
we see that 70 is also repeated twice. So this data has two modes. And there is also a possibility of no mode when no value is repeated. The important point to be noted with regards to mode is that mode is neither influenced by the magnitude as was the mean nor by the position as was the median. It is a measure of repetition. Now let's understand and talk a little bit about outliers. We'll have a more technical description of outliers in one of our subsequent videos, but for our understanding with respect to central tendency, let's see how outliers impact a central tendency. Outliers are unusual observations. These could be the values which are very high or very low compared to a typical value in a given data set. Suppose there are 10 people traveling in a bus, their yearly salaries in dollars are listed below. It has a minimum of 60,000 and a maximum of 85,000. When we calculate, we can easily get a mean of 74,000, a median of 77,500. Now assume that one of the employees who is there in the bus is replaced by the CEO of the company. And the CEO of the company has a staggering salary of $40 million. Now if we go about calculating the average and the median, this is what we get. So what we essentially see here is the fact that the mean now is about $4 million. So if we were to talk about that one number, which represents the salaries of all the employees in the bus, we'll say that every employee is a millionaire. But the fact is that it's only one person who is a multi-millionaire. Rest all are still earning that ordinary salary. Whereas if you notice, the median in this case remains completely unaffected. Why? Because the median is not influenced by the values. It is a measure of position. Therefore, a very important takeaway for us here is that whenever our data has outliers, it means that we cannot use mean as a measure of central tendency. We'll end up drawing wrong conclusions. Say a labor would have got onto the bus who is earning pretty less, maybe about $10,000. That would have also tweaked the average down. So it could tweak your average down it could tweak your average up. What's important is that we understand our outliers before we decide on which measure of central tendency to be used. Thank you.